I went to the film school, USC School of Cinematic Arts, and this is the sort of thing we would do before we watched a movie. It sort of helps uh, give it some context. Um, anyways, a bit about me. My name is Amanda Milius. My father directed and wrote this movie. Uh, his name's John Milius. Um, I did a movie <clears throat> two years ago called Plot Against the President with my film company, AMDC Films. Um, and uh, I, uh, I was actually also the person who, through many of your sessions, has been interrupting you most of the time to scold everyone in the room for not funding the arts. Um, so that's been me. Um, <laughs> Um, and, and this is why. Um, uh, the, I'll, uh, to say just a word about obviously why I'm standing here, um, with one movie, uh, Plot Against the President, um, based on the work of a genius and brave congressman, Devin Nunes, and the genius and brave journalism of Lee Smith, the author of the book, we have forever changed the narrative on the insidious lie that is Russia gaze. Um, and that's what movies can do. Um, it's different than an article, it lasts forever. Uh, the movie ends with Michael Anton, one of our uh, conference's uh, favorite speakers, uh, basically coming to tears uh, practically at uh, the thought of our fallen country and a sitting congressman's plea to shut down the corrupt intel agencies that rule us. Um, and that, uh, that movie, if you haven't seen it, um, it's on Amazon, it's very easy to find. It's the documentary with more reviews than any other documentary ever. Um, and it's actually good. It uh, doesn't um, suck like uh, most other, um, some other cons conservative or dissident or whatever you want to call it, uh, content that would be more considered videos. Uh, my goal in life is to have us make things more like cinema. So now on to cinema. <clears throat> um, what you will watch tonight is cinema. Um, it will suspend your disbelief um, in a humorous way, especially considering the casting decisions that are made these days where everyone has to either play the exact historical character that they are um, or be some composition of some pleasant minority to Hollywood. Um, in this movie, we have uh, the uh, bold move of Sean Connery playing an Arab, no less. Um, which actually works uh, and is actually really fantastic. And um, it will uh, challenge much of what we've discussed here at the conference so far in regards to American imperialism, to imperialism in general. Um, uh, another reason we chose it is because unlike Plot Against the President, Red Dawn, Conan the Barbarian, um, and uh, Apocalypse Now and other movies that uh, my father was involved with, um, very few people have seen this one. Um, which is a shame because it's really one of the finer films that he did. Um, this is what my dad was doing, just to give you some inside information. Um, this is what my father was working on when Coppola um, decided to take over directing Apocalypse Now, because my dad was busy directing this, um, and uh, they had uh, uh, Lucas on Star Wars, and so there was, there was no one left to direct Apocalypse Now, so Coppola did. Um, anyways, um, so... Um, the, um, sorry, I'm not the, I tend to be the person behind the camera, so bear with me for a second. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the film because there's some interesting facts. Um, it's actually based off a real event in 1904 called the Petacaris Affair, um, in which uh, an American was kidnapped um, by this uh, Berber, and um, my dad decided to take uh, cinematic liberty. Um, he learned of the story based off of one of Barbara Tuckman's articles, uh, who is his, one of his favorite historical writers. Um, but took the cinematic liberty to make uh, Petacaris a woman. Um, and being that my father is known as this, like, you know, oh, he's Mr. Macho, everything about, like, he's Conan, like, everything's about him is masculine, blah, blah, blah. He actually wrote some of the most complex and interesting and cool uh, female characters that aren't annoying. Um, uh, the movie came out in 1975. It was after his first directorial debut of Dillinger, which also a great movie, and before um, his movie Big Wednesday. I'm going to tell you one little note that um, 
he had as an idea for the film that uh, you'll see doesn't exactly come to pass, but it gives you an idea of why he did this. Uh, Melia says he originally wanted Mrs. Pettikaris to be 55 or 60 and played by Catherine Hepburn, and the children would be her grandchildren, and the Berber would be of a similar age. Her husband has died years ago. He's a stern, she's a stern, rich, old woman, and she has a, a last romantic fling with this stern, rich, old Berber, the sultan of the mountains, who can't really do all the things he used to do, but pulls it together one more time to save her from the blue people. <laughs> A very heroic character, and of course the children would look at such a character as being even greater than Sean Connery. This old man would be the greatest old thing they'd ever seen, and they'd have great admiration for their grandmother for standing up to him, the way old people can snipe at each other and love each other at the same time because they have the common bond of age. Um, that actually is not what ended up happening with the movie, because as you will know, it was uh, cast with the very handsome Sean Connery and the very young and beautiful Candace Bergen. Um, <clears throat> it also stars Brian Keith in a very memorable uh, performance as Theodore Roosevelt, um, one of my dad's favorite uh, presidents. Um, and uh, it also features the director, John Houston, is in it, who my dad liked so much that he almost named me Angelica so that we could be John and Angelica, but I think my mom got involved in that one. Um, um, it was produced by MGM uh, and distributed by the soon-to-be uh, disintegrated United Artists um, and uh, Columbia Pictures. This is not an, <clears throat> an indie film in the least. This is the studio system. Um, the searchers references are all over this movie. I mean, they're, my dad is obsessed with the, ser the searchers and uh, you will notice many, many references to it in the movie. So if David Brooks, if you're still listening or paying attention, um, you old bat, my offer still stands. Uh, anyways, um, uh, the, uh, you know, this, as I said, uh, I, I mean, some people know my father tried to join the Marine Corps um, in uh, his early days. He was rejected, which he thinks, claims, began his artistic obsession with war, American foreign policy, mostly his, I would call, love affair and romanticization of it. Um, he said this was his first real epic movie. Um, this is what he was, as, as I said, directed when Coppola uh, had asked him to take over Apocalypse. Um, so history changes in the strangest of ways. Um, <clears throat> um, what I want to talk about, why this movie was perfect for this conference, um, this, as uh, with many of my dad's movies, is about character. What leads people to behave the way they do? Is it God, Allah? Is it uh, the US Constitution? Is it um, a different God? Uh, and finally, the theme of sovereignty, most specifically, whose sovereignty? Um, I'd like you to pay attention to the final lines by Teddy Roosevelt in this movie. It's, they're extremely memorable and um, speak quite a bit to uh, the kind of um, sovereignty and ideas America had about it uh, in the past. Um, one of the um, other points I wanted to mention about this uh, film, what that my dad had said, is that it was basically meant to be a boys' adventure movie. When's the last time we had boys' adventure movies? Seen through the children's eyes. I'm sick of seeing children used as the point of view when they're sitting there just blanched with terror. And it's so true because little boys don't tend to actually react that way. They see a man with a sword and they want the sword. Um, and that's uh, very much uh, prevalent in this. Uh, another point that um, that uh, I want you to notice in this, um, you know, wh what it was meant to be an American overseas uh, at the time when this was made. Um, what did we What did we do with our gift of being a superpower? In the post-Benghazi and Afghanistan pullout days, when we see a movie like this, when uh, someone was kidnapped or there was an international incident, what did America do? What was the response? Um, now, granted, this was based on a real story, and my dad is prone to exaggerations of true events, uh, as sometimes is needed to tell the, the bigger truth. Um, I just wish that one of those uh, exaggerated truths wasn't Yes, Amanda, I will bestow upon you the Conan sword. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> lastly, uh, 
How do you not want to see a movie that has at times been described as both Al-Qaeda and Newt Gingrich's favorite movie? Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and um, the uh, one thing, as I hope not to get emotional, I would hate anyone to see me like that, um, I have to tell you one thing, because this is a, a, a real honor to be able to show one of my dad's movies at a conference like this. Um, um, this is a quote from someone you have heard of, uh, Steven Spielberg, and I think, you know, it's a very known quote, but I think it's apt here. He said, John is our scoutmaster. He's the one who will tell you to go on a trip and only take enough food, only take enough water for one day, and he'll make you stay out way longer than that. He's the one that says, be a man. I don't want to see any tears. He's a terrific raconteur, a wonderful storyteller. John has more heart and life than all the rest of us put together. Um, and I'll end with, um, <clears throat> with that note, which you can definitely feel the heart in this movie. Uh, I will end with a note from my dad. Uh, he's very honored that you guys were playing the movie tonight. Um, he's honored that a gathering of the esteemed minds, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to apologize first because as you know, he had a stroke um, about 10 years ago and he unfortunately doesn't speak and write as eloquently as you will see he once did. Um, but you can see that the heart is still there. Um, <clears throat> he's honored that a gathering of the esteemed minds here at this festival want to show his film. He says thank you so much um, and that he wished that he could be here, but like the Razuli, age catches everyone. Thank you.